Dublin, capital of Ireland, a gorgeous city, rich in culture. You can take in the sights and the sounds of the riverfront and immerse yourself in its long history in the museums. But this video is about street food. And most importantly, gimmicks. We flew out of Liverpool Airport at around 7 p.m. Flights were £15 each, which is a sixth of the price of a train from Manchester to London, which is frankly fucking ridiculous. We headed straight to the bar. Hey, love. Don't she's doing. I'm a bit of an anxious flyer, so a few pints before boarding is an absolutely essential part of the trip. The flight took just under an hour, so I didn't miss too much of the game. We headed to the hotel to drop our bags before going for a bite to eat. Happy honeymoon. Hey, happy honeymoon, my love. It was not our honeymoon. Reyna, which is a Turkish grill, wasn't too far away, and all of the airport pints had me craving a kebab. We went for the mixed donna with lamb and chicken. It came with pickled red cabbage, salad, and a homemade bread. Let's try some of this chicken first. Oh, man. It's good. My only worry is it's going to be gone in about 30 seconds. A lot of people say it's the best about it in Dublin and I've only been here for half an hour it'll take some beating so, some of the donna some of the chicken some of the lettuce a bit of tomato as well right, let's wrap that up let's give it a dip it's so good isn't it Had our kebab and now we're gonna to go to Temple Bar. I've been there before, it's about fucking 20 quid for a Guinness. Tourist trap, we're going to proper search for a good Guinness tomorrow. Everyone has said stay away from here, but we're gonna go there. So, this is the Temple Bar, notoriously busy and expensive, but it is popular for a reason. There was live music playing and the crowd had people from every stretch of the world visiting this great city. The vibes were a 10 and the Guinness definitely hit the spot. Oh, I tried to put the G, I fucked it. We did kind of want to sit down after all the travelling so we walked down the road to the old storehouse. This was a Wednesday night and everywhere was rammed but we found a little table in the corner. It's nice as the temple bar as well, I'll be honest with you, but at least we can sit down in here. Cheers. Next up on my list of places to drink Guinness was Bose. This was a little bit quieter and a bit more upmarket. They had an unbelievable whiskey selection, but I was here for one reason and one reason only. It's fucking free. Can I get another one of these please? It's an old school fucking glass that. This was the best part of the evening. We propped up the bar for a while, chatting to the barman, who was a legend, and then decided to head back to the hotel. Tomorrow was a big day. I might not look it right now, but I feel like a kid waking up on Christmas morning, because today we're going to the Guinness factory. It is, what time is it? Half 10 in the morning. Just about slept off all the Guinness from last night, so uh, now I've just got to go again, really. We stayed in Hotel 7, a short walk and a shorter drive from town. It was around 90 quid a night. All we need is a comfy bed. We don't spend much time in hotels, so usually go for a cheaper stay. This was perfect. Wasn't the best part of Guinness in the world. Luckily, I'm going to the fucking factory now. I had no breakfast, woke up too late, went to bed too late. Oh, our room is here, so uh, we're gonna get in. The Guinness factory, my pilgrimage. Felt like a kid going into Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. There's a short walk around where you can discover everything about the ingredients they use, from the barley to the hops to the water, the process, the equipment, the history. 
everything about it was classy and really interesting for a guy like me who just drank it without ever really giving a shit about the intricacies and nuance that make this drink so, so special. The tasting room was like something out of Men in Black, bright white with steaming bowls of ingredients. We were encouraged to go and smell each one before trying a little glass of fresh Guinness. A really nice touch. There's even a floor dedicated to the marketing and iconic adverts over the years before you get to the first bar. You can pay eight euros for a pint with your photo on it, which we obviously had to do. So I've learned a whole lot about Guinness, how it started, how it's brewed, what ingredients they use, but now it's time to, uh, to fucking drink a load of it. This is the legendary gravity bar on the seventh floor. Can I get a Guinness? And can I have a hot house as well, please? In the Guinness factory, on the seventh floor, I'm in the gravity bar. Out. I'm and she's having a fucking lager. <laughs> After I'd got over the outrage of my wife not getting a Guinness, we sat down and drank with a stunning 360 view of the whole of Dublin. Tickets were 26 quid each with a free pint at the top. It's a must if you love the black stuff. We have left the Guinness factory. The Guinness at the top, it wasn't that great, was it? We've had better. Too. Last night we had better Guinness than, uh, than the factory, which is weird, but... Um, it was it was all right. It's midday. I've had three pints of Guinness, so uh, we're going to Del Rio's Cafe uh, for their all-day breakfast menu. Del Rio's, here we come. Del Rio's has been fueling the good people of Dublin with top-quality cafe grub for 75 years. We got the big breakfast: two Irish sausages, two eggs, four pieces of white pudding, two bacon, beans, and toast. We got a side of the chips too, and I don't know what they fry these in, but that crunch was absolutely unreal. If you want to line your stomach for a day of drink, this is the place for you. We walked down to Mulligan's where I forgot to take the slow motion mode off my camera, but the Guinness was wonderful. Is it in slow motion? No. <laughs> where next? The Palace. The Palace. The Palace Bar is one of Dublin's oldest pubs. They've been selling pints for 200 years. This is just a place you have to experience. And the Guinness was fantastic. Bloody good Guinness, that. We just had a lovely, uh, a lovely pint of Guinness, another lovely pint of Guinness in the Palace Bar. And now we are going to... The Oliver St. John Gogarty. The where? The Oliver St. John Gogarty Bar. We're going there. <laughs> Gogarty's was bustling and you could hear it from down the street. It's notorious for having live music every day from 1pm until 2.30 in the morning. The vibes were impeccable and the Guinness was stunning. I'm just enjoying them. I'm just enjoying every single pint. Enjoying Dublin as a city. I don't really want to leave but it's fucking expensive here. It's fucking expensive here. And there's a place opposite called the Old Dubliner. So uh, we're gonna go in there for pint number eight at quarter four. Hey, hey, hey. They're all starting to taste the same now, if I'm being completely brutally honest. Go and request uh, I will. What are, you, what are you gonna request? Never you I don't know what she's gonna request here. She's, up, she's fucking requested Elvis. This is our wedding song. Falling in love with you. Babe, I'm getting to the stage where I want to fucking sing Bohemian Rhapsody in front of an adoring crowd. This Guinness is wonderful. The vibe is wonderful. The old Dubliner. It does smell a sick in here. It does smell, <laughs> it does smell a little bit in here. But authenticity is key. Pretty uh, full of Guinness, so we're going to go into this bar, Badass, and get a Smethix. Badass is a little bit more of a rock pub. It was pumping out Guns N' Roses when we went in. It's like a 
sick of water. Honestly, it doesn't really taste so much. I don't think it needs to taste so much. I think it, it's just fucking, fucking good. So when I was in Mayo a couple of years ago, uh, a lot of the guys were drinking something they call a special. So a special is Smithix with a top of Guinness. I don't know if I'm going to get chased out of Dublin with a fucking pitchfork for ordering that, so I'm not going to do that here, but it's very, very, very nice. It's just less heavy. It is less heavy, it's so light, but the problem with it being so light is that this will be gone within two minutes. So Sarah wants to go to a cocktail bar, because apparently it's here, but it's not. I want to ring the bell. <laughs> Ding dong. After our initial confusion, we went up to Vintage Cocktail Club, a snug little speakeasy with a roaring fire and a banging cocktail menu. Yeah. Are old fashioned here? That's a really nice one, mate. Right? I feel like Don fucking Draper. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> right, cocktail bar done, and now we are heading to Dash Burger. Apparently, some of the best smash patties in in the city. They messaged us on Instagram, and we're gonna go and try Dash Burger. I'd seen this place on a few pages when I was researching places to eat. The staff welcomed us and recommended we get the cheeseburger cheese fries and the jalapeno poppers. The great things about this. That's insane. That's insane. The depth of flavour in that Irish beef patty is insane. This is absolutely insane. I can't believe it. Try the cheese fried. I'm struggling for words here. I feel like there's a little bit of blue cheese in there as well, you know. My first ever job was in a bar. They did these jalapeno poppers. And these taste exactly like them. Dash Burgers Dublin are doing everything right right now. They're doing everything right. They're doing nothing wrong. All hits, no misses. Check them out. Right, we're going panty bar. Oh, I'm splitting. Split it now. left every single decision on bars for today with this good woman here. Where's next, my love? The Working Men's Club. That sounds fucking class. You are not a working man. Hey. And it's about time you got your damn hands dirty. <laughs> <laughs> this place was very cool. A little bit too cool for me, if I'm being completely honest. Oh my God, you can smoke out there. I will always remember Slattery's Bar, the first place in Dublin to split the G. You did it! You did it! I did it. So it's taken me fucking 12 pints. We want to sing some songs, right? Because I was born to be a star. So we're going to go and sing in this bar here. The wool shed is where the night sort of escalated. Delicious and nutritious. Karaoke is a passion of mine, despite being absolutely fucking horrendous, especially after 15 pints and a load of shots. It was time to call it a night. I can see the hotel from here. And we got a taxi for two minutes away. That is embarrassing. Na night, baby. Heavy night last night. Woke up not feeling the best. 
I walked to the shop this morning to get my good wife painkillers, um, some bit of breakfast, and I trod on a big dog shit. And my taxi is here now, and I'm going to Grave Diggers, which is apparently best Guinness in Dublin. And I'm excited, she's in bed. Let's go. John Kavanagh is located next to a cemetery. Established in 1833, mourners used to leave their hearses outside and come in and drink away the pain. When they left, the grave diggers came in to get levered, and so the name was born. Now it's home to one of the best pints in the world. Well, I'm not hungover anymore. This will be gone fucking quickly, just. Something special happening here in this pub. Being quiet because I'm talking to a fucking camera on my own. But there's something fucking special happening here. And I'm a part of it now. Grape diggers in Dublin. Get yourself over here. I've had two pints. Well, one and a half. One and a one of the third pints, and I'm right back to where I was last night, singing Bohemian Rhapsody in front of tens of adoring fans. Just have to wonder where today ends up for me. I'm in a fucking graveyard, but it is lovely to have a little walk like this every now and again. We'll all end up here one day. My taxi's coming, and he's gonna be this way. I don't know what's going on today. I'm just a walking train wreck today. Loving Spoon was a much needed addition to my morning. Any food at all at this stage would have sufficed, but this place was perfect. The staff was super friendly and the scram was tip top. I ordered the biggest breakfast that they had. Much needed, much needed breakfast. Here we go. And I'm going to put a little bit of brown sauce on there. That is outstanding. The white pudding is good. You know what else is good? Baked bean foam. We're gonna break these eggs up here as well. Oh, look at it, oozing out. Wow. Loving Spoon in Dublin. If you're hungover, get yourself to Loving Spoon. Do yourself a favor. Get here, get involved. I've dropped another bean on my phone. We are gonna go to the first pub that we see. That's open. That's open. Looks like it's Thomas Clark's. Okay, here we go. After Thomas Clark's, we headed across to Camden Street. Devitt's had been recommended by quite a few people, so we went in to sample its produce. We really liked it in here, and the pints, plural, were great. Next up was the Camden Hotel. This place is fucking massive with about five bars in it. The main area to watch sport in was really impressive, and it had more screens than a NASA control room. They've got their own brewery in there, and there's even a cinema room you can rent out for big games with you and your mates. These were little balls of spicy, cheesy noodles, deep fried with a spicy dip. We got the salt and chilli squid, the prawn toast, the chicken katsu curry, and the ramen poutine fries. It was all absolutely delicious, as was this Aperol spritz. Outside the hotel. Wait there, this is my hotel. Where the fuck is my fucking hotel? I've simply just put the pin in the wrong place on the old Uber. We stumbled back to the hotel room after some confusion and went to bed. We needed breakfast early the next day, so got straight in a taxi to the old mill for a big fry and a pint of Guinness. Now I'm going to level with you here, we were both struggling quite dramatically at this stage. So I couldn't tell you a damn thing about how this breakfast was, even if I wanted to. It's not as good as Del Rio's or Loving Spoon, that's all I know.
I'm at sixes and sevens today. I'm all out of kilter. I'm battered, I'm bruised. This is our last day in Dublin. We fly back this evening. And now we're about to go into, what bar are we going? O'Donoghue's. That'll fucking do. That'll fucking do. Our flight home was at five. Plenty of time for a skin full of the black stuff before we flew back home to total pint mediocrity. These flew down the hatch easily, and just like that, we were back in the game. So much so that we decided to pay Token a visit. This is a retro arcade with some classic video games. You get your tokens and walk around reliving your youth, depending on your age, obviously. We got to stage three on Time Crisis before dying. Not bad. Food time. Bambino was recommended to us by an Italian who visited, so we figured it had to be good. It's a traditional New York style slice shop with full pies available too if you're hungry or a fucking monster. We went for a mushroom, a plain cheese and tomato, and a sausage and pepper slice. That's a proper New York slice, like right? you know. I'm gonna try the cheese and tomato now. We're gonna fold. God, that's a good slice. Really fucking crispy base. Really nice. The sausage. It's proper Italian. I don't want to big up too much. Because I've, I've had a few pints. But this is, this, is, this is outstanding. Our last pint of the trip was in the Hairy Lemon. This is a cool place. Decades of memorabilia hang from the ceilings while the bar is decorated with foreign currency signed by patrons with messages of love. On the way to the airport, we had to stop off at San Sabs for an Irish delicacy, a spice bag. This is basically chicken and chips with a load of stir-fried veg with Chinese spices and enough MSG to take down a fucking horse. This one was exactly what the doctor ordered. It's salty, it's sweet, it's wonderful. I'm in love with it. It's on the way from the city to the airport, directly in the middle. Come here, trust me. We were gutted to be leaving, but our livers were not. Dublin will be back.